we will now talk about technical structure. In order for any maintenance to be done, you first need a technical structure. Uh, the best way to view a technical structure is, is as the blueprints of the plant. So the technical structure encompasses the functional locations, the equipments, and all the build materials that are within the operations of the plant. So an example of a function location would be a room or a system. It's something dynamic that you can't take in and out so easily. An example of equipment would be something that you could install and dismantle. Something like a belt, something like uh, an air conditioning unit, or a car in a parking lot. And then a bill of materials would be different parts, all the parts that are needed within other, another material, an assembly, or an equipment. So an example would be what are all the parts that make up the, uh, the air conditioner? What are all the parts that make up an assembly of an engine, an engine assembly? From there, you could create all the preventive maintenance plans from whatever is in a technical structure. And you could also do corrective maintenance off whatever breaks down within the technical structure. Usually, technical structure is, uh, is uh, done within the data load. And then if anything's wrong with the data within the data load, you adjust it right there on the spot. and then afterwards let's say within after all the data has been corrected from the data load there should no be should not be any adjustments unless there's a capital order which means there's new equipment or you're scrapping equipment or you're scrapping a line now we're going to go look into the SAP side of this so here in a technical structure here's all the transaction codes that are necessary for it so you first need a technical structure transaction code, which has a star saying that it needs to be set up. So transactions are IH01, IE01, IL01, IH08. So the way this is managed is the following way. You have the data load, and then you look at the IH01 to look at the whole technical structure, see what is there. From there, you might make adjustments. Either you go right through the technical structure and change the equipments or change the function locations, or you have to create new equipments via IE01 or new function locations via IL01. Also, once you start maneuvering the managing the equipments within the technical structure, you'll use IH08 to see all the equipments that you have, which ones are installed, which ones are not installed, which ones are deleted, which ones are in storage, etc. From there, you will manage your bill of materials. You have two options for bill materials. You have one that is a, the equipment bill of materials, BOM, and the other one is the material BOM. And then the, these two transaction codes here, IB01 and CS021, are just to edit the bill of materials. You could edit the bill of materials right from the technical structure as well. Actually, I take it back, you can't edit the bill of materials from the technical structure. Sorry. You do it right here from the these tra two transaction codes. So let's start. We'll start off with a technical structure. It has a star here. That means they're set up beforehand. You click here. This is already set up. But if you're to open this up, you'll see this is how it looks like originally. These are the settings you want to have in here. You want to have the plant. You want to have levels above and levels below, 1-1. One, one location hierarchy, equipment installed, equipment hierarchy, and bomb explosion, and only PM related items. This is the way it should be set up in order for the users to see the items they need. Once this is done, you press save, and you put it under U underscore the user's name, and you press save again. That's how you set up anything. We're going to press execute, now we're going to see the plant. Here you'll see anything blue is function location. Anything green is um, anything green is in equipment. And anything pink are materials. In this case here we have a material which has materials underneath it. We're going to discuss the build materials later on. But you'll see that the build material has if it's a non-stock item, it would be N. Stocked item would be L. 
that goes into inventory management and that will be explained further there. Uh, the good thing about the technical structure is that right from here you could do, make your changes. So you could click right here on the, on the maintenance, press the pencil and select maintenance room. That's the change you want. You press re refresh and it will show it. You could also do the same thing to equipments. We want to change this name of the equipment here. Double click on it, edit, and we want to call this the muffin oven number two. Save, refresh, there it is. Now, from here, we're going to go create an equipment now. If we look at our function location, we're going to decide to create an equipment here for the sanitation. So the first thing we're going to do, they got a second scale in this scenario. We're going to click here, press the pencil, say scale number one, save. We press refresh, there's scale number one. Now I'm going to go create a new scale. So click on the create equipment, enter, scale number two. You go to location, you put the plan, which is 2507, and then you put the cost center, 2507-4340, and the planner group, which is always 001. Then you put structure, change install location, and you put, put where you're going to put it. In this case, it's under shipping, 2507-SHP. Go here, 2507-SHP, press enter, go there. Save. We go back to the technical structure. We press refresh. There's scale number two. If we want to dismantle it, we're going to go click here, press pencil, structure, change install location, dismantle. Go through it, save. Refresh, it's gone. Now we're going to go back and talk about uh, creating functional locations. So you go in here, and the first thing you need to know about function locations is that the data transfers over from the the this, the function location that is installed above, that, that's superior to it. So in this case, we have set it up in config to do that way. So here's a structure indicator, which is also a config item. In SAP, naturally, what it does is that if you, let's say you put 2507, it will naturally take that function location that you are creating with a 2507. It will look for anything that has 2507. And if it already, something already exists, then it will use that as its superior location. Else, if nothing else exists, it will create a brand new one for it. In this case, we are going to call one test. So, we're going to call it test. We're going to press enter. We're going to put this test functional location. We're going to go location. So already the data is already there. And so is the cost center and planner group. And we're going to save. If we go back to the function location and we press refresh, you'll see that it's already here. From here, we could take this and install equipment to it. So. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to use IH08. So we've got to set this up. You've got to go in here, and the first time you see it, it's going to look like this. So you'll set it up to minimize all the fields, except for the following fields, which are just a planner group and equipment description. Once you do that, you once again, you press save, U underscore the user's name, and that's it. And it'll always be like that forever. We're going to press execute. And now we're going to look at IH08. Here's a list of equipment. The first two tabs deal with the function location where the equipment is installed. If the function location is blank, that means the equipment is not installed anywhere, and it's either deleted or is in storage, or it's brand new and it's waiting to be installed somewhere. The next one is the equipment number. After that's the description of the equipment, and after that's the status of the equipment. Available means is ready to be used. Deleted mean DLFL means has been deleted, and INST means has been installed. It's installed somewhere within the plant. 
So from here, we could take equipment that is available and install it somewhere. So an example would be this scale that we just dismantled from uh, the shipping area. So we'll click on the scale, press the pencil to you can make changes. Go structure, change install location. We're going to install into the test function location. Press enter, save. We're going to press refresh, and now the test the scales in a test function location. We could also delete things. For example, we could delete this chunk or two. I'm going to click on it, press change mode, equipment, functions, deletion flag set, save. Refresh, it's now got the deleted flag. You could always go in here and undelete it. You could go here, change mode, equipment, functions, deletion flags, reset. That means it's not deleted anymore. So that's how the IH08 is managed. So now we have uh, learned how to edit the technical structure and view it, create equipment for it, create the functional locations for it, uh, look at the list of equipment that currently exists. Now we're going to look into bill of materials. So for bill of materials, we're going to have to do a little explanation of how this works. The way a bill of material works is the following way. It's basically a list of equipment, a list of materials that you wish to have saved in order to make it easier for your, your maintenance staff to order materials. So an example would be a bread oven. So maybe for a bread oven, there exists about 100 parts that you might order for that bread oven. You would like to create a bill of materials for that bread oven, so every time a maintainer needs to order parts for it, they don't have to search by the the material number. They could just look at a list of all the parts that can that make up the bread oven, and then the, you could just click on it and order it. Makes my life much easier. Now that'll be an equipment bomb. Now the idea of a material bomb is a bit different. So let's pretend that you have many. You have a, a series of equipments that all use the same type of parts. An example would be. Uh, for cars. So let's say you have 20 different cars or that it could be three different models and uh, each model even though it has a different model name uses the same engine. So when you're creating the build materials for the engine assembly you will create one build materials which is a material bomb for the engine and then you'll add that build of materials, a material bomb to the equipment bomb of each one of those cars. So every time you make a change to the way to the parts that make up the engine, you make it at one place. You make it at the material bomb and that gets automatically transferred to all the equipments that have that material bomb. So in this case, we're going to start by doing the looking at uh, all the parts. So We'll first look at all the parts that exist for this plant. Here's all the parts that exist. Now, we're going to create a material for the reducer for the gearbox reducer ratio. So I'm going to take a material bomb. You always put the plant number and number four, which is always maintenance. Here you have the different components that can make this up. You have to put in the component number and the quantity, and if it's in stock or non-stock. L means stock, N means non-stock. That will explain further in inventory management. So. In this case, we're going to add all these parts right here. All these parts here are going to make up this material bomb. Now I'm going to go look at these parts and see which ones are stock or non-stock. So 
stock, V1 means stock, stock, and D means non-stock. So the first two are stock, the last two are non-stock. So I'll make this L, L, and then N, then N. Then I'm going to put a quantity of each one, one for each one. And here is my bill of materials. Now I changed my mind. I'm going to make this a quantity of two. And I'm going to save. I'm going to go back into my function location. I'm going to press refresh. And you'll see that I'm going to add this to the, the scales. Right now the scales don't have any bill of materials. The scales, let's say, are the exact same. So I just created my, my material bomb for this. Now we're going to go create the bill of materials for the equipment. So we'll start first with the scale one, and then I'll do scale two. So scale one, what I'll do, I'll add this material here, which will bring in all its materials from the material bomb. I'll say a quantity of one, and I'll say this is a stocked item. Save. Now I'll do the same for scale number two. One item. Save. Now when I go to the function location, I press refresh, you'll see that both of these have the exact same bill materials, and both of them have the same parts underneath it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a change to the material bomb. CS02. I'm now gonna I'm now gonna add an extra two parts. So I'm gonna add these two bearings right here. I'm gonna say they're both non-stock. I'm gonna ask for a quantity of five each. And I'm going to save it. Now I'm going to go back to the function location. I'm going to press refresh. And you'll see that the bearings have been added to both pieces of equipment. Now that concludes creating an equipment bomb, a material bomb, changing an equipment bomb, changing a material bomb. This concludes technical structure.